the opportunities here are so big that it doesn't make sense to go back to the states zara and julius left the u.s to find greener pastures in uganda is this possible i came here to do business but also for peace for my family Upon arrival, the couple legally started a beef processing company, Ubora Safi, which is currently registering some success from the word go. Once I had G-nuts with toke and sweet potatoes, oh, I was sold. Roughly 20,000 Ugandans apply for the U.S. visa, which simply means the U.S. makes over 12 billion Ugandan shillings out of these applications which is roughly 3.1 million dollars each and every year in search for greener pastures but for this couple they are saying no they are defying the odds and choosing to come to uganda where they spot a lot of opportunities is this possible these are the reasons as to why these people moved to uganda on a different note Today I am bringing you something unusual that doesn't usually happen on the channel and that is some people or a person that left the US for Uganda and they are here I think for good. Yeah. So allow me introduce you to this gentleman that is here in Uganda to do business. He's going to be telling us more about himself and who he is. You're welcome to the channel. Thank you. Thank you. How are you doing? And please tell them what your name is. Well, I'm Julius from the States. Um, I came here to do business, but also for peace for my family. Um, we're a family of six, so it is a situation where the bit to do business here is a lot easier, sort of. Like, so to do the visa process, it was a little bit easier um, and cheaper for agriculture, which we want, which that's what we wanted to do. That's where you spotted your opportunities. Yeah. You know, agriculture, there's a lot of business to be done. And there's a lot of money in agriculture here. So, you know, even as simple as if you just wanted to raise cows, cattle, or sheep, for example, and just ship it and export some and then make different products here, the market is as big as you want it to be. Value addition. Yeah, the value addition it's here. What you looked at. Oh man, it, it's it's huge. That's great. And by now you've said it all started from a podcast that you saw, and it was about Uganda. Yeah, yeah. And that's when you picked interest and said you were like, no, let me go to Uganda. Yeah. And after that, you looked at the processes of how to get the visa and everything. Right. That means they were way better and easier than other countries. Oh yeah. Um, funny enough, it, it's it's crazy now to think, but you know, Uganda was not on the list. Yeah. You know, it's not like we didn't hear the country; we knew, but we never gave Uganda a chance until we saw a few different podcasts yeah. on YouTube, and it was amazing. After that, I was like, we should have had them on the list the whole time. Yeah. So, yeah. and I think that simply means. The content that we put out there is important to the people that are, are doing research about coming to this country. Right. Right. Okay, yeah. you've heard it guys and that is why it is very important for you to like this video, share it with the people that you think it will impact. You have said you are a family of six. Yeah. That means you, the two, mm -hmm. the leaders and then the kids. Yeah. How are you people finding Uganda so far? Because you're here for, we've been here for some months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been here for a while. Yeah. So, um, my oldest, my, my oldest child, she, uh, my oldest daughter, she hated that she was even leaving the States in the beginning. Yeah. Um, my three youngest, you know, they're, they're little, they're little babies. So, they don't care. As long as they can play, run around, they're okay. Yeah. You know, um, but in general, me and my wife, we have adjusted fairly. You know, my oldest, she's going back for school only, but she has noticed that the opportunities here are so big that it doesn't make sense to go back to the States and stay there. She's gonna go back and learn, take work, work, work a few different types of jobs and then come back within the next 
likes that view. And she has gotten that, the, she's loving the country mm. after visiting mm. it. Yes. When you talked about the theme of coming, yeah. she never liked it, but oh. later after settling here for some months, yeah. she's loving it. Yeah. I she think that's, hated it. That's why it's, it's important for people yeah. never to judge. Like yeah. someone would judge and be like, no, I wouldn't go to such a country exactly. for this and these reasons. But when you go on ground and see what is happening, right. it will be so different. Right. Let's talk about foods, because <laughs> I know when you live when you live in the states for Uganda, yeah. I think I would like I would say most of the foods you people feast on are <laughs> refrigerated and yeah. which is not the different the the case here. Yeah. How are you finding Ugandan food so far? Ugandan food is different, man. Yeah. It's different than what we're used to. You know. Not only just the, the refrigerating part, it is the, though we use different flavors and the way we cook stuff is just completely different. Yeah. But once I had G-nuts with matoke yeah. and sweet potatoes, ah, oh, I was sold. I was sold. And matoke <laughs> is one of the commonest foods yeah. right here. Yeah. Talk about the fruits. Oh, man. The fruit here is completely different. Like back in the States, it's more bitter or more acidic, so a little sour, you know, like pineapple. But pineapples here, best thing I've ever had in my life. You know, but even like the, the bananas, I, I haven't, funny enough for me, yeah. unlike my kids and my wife, um, I haven't actually had a banana until I got here. <laughs> and then I had a banana. And it is one of the commonest what? foods here. Yeah, very easy to yeah. cook, and you can cook it in many different ways. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about the people. How are you finding Ugandans so far? Because oh, every every other person out there has experiences with different people. Yeah. Someone will tell you Ugandans this, Ugandans this, mm -hmm. and that. How are you finding Ugandans so far? Yeah. Like in the beginning, I had no expectations. Yeah. I came in with an open mind, and Honestly, in general, I haven't had no problems. Yeah. Man, Ugandans are cool. Yeah. I'm like, if Ugandans went to the States, yeah. they would they would fit right in, you know. Of course, a different accent, but other than that, yeah, Ugandans are cool. They're okay. They're cool. And a lot of people have, there is a, lo there is a lot to witness when it comes to Ugandans being cool. Of course, yeah. that element it's always there that there are some bad in something bad, some bad mangoes in, in the basket. <laughs> yeah. But we shall keep that. How are you finding the weather? I know the other side you have. Yeah. How many seasons? We have four. Four seasons. Yeah. Here we have two. Two. Yeah. And how are you coping up with the season? How are you finding the season? How oh, is the weather? Man. You know, I am still in a. Like right now, if I was in the States, it would be getting warm. But not really. It would still be kind of cold. Yeah. So, um, I, I'm sweating everything I do. Yeah. If I sit down, I'm sweating. But the weather is beautiful. It's perfect weather. It's just that my body is used to the winter right now. Yeah. But the weather, if you don't come for any other reason, yeah. come for the weather. The weather is perfect. Yeah. And Uganda is known for that is one of the things. It's known for food, mm. it's known for good weather, and when you go into, can I call it, can I call it refreshment or amusement, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, go, we look at tourism. Right, right. One of the ways you can relax. Yeah. Have you visited any parks or have you had any information or any opportunities, investment opportunities into the tourism industry so far, or you haven't looked yeah. at that? You um, looked at the agriculture part only? We, you know, me and my wife, we have always had a theory of being very laser focused. Yeah. So in general, it is just agriculture and meat production. However, you know, we have seen what tourism can bring. Okay. But we visited a few places, you know, from driving to Kenya. So we've seen a lot and stopped through. But uh, we stayed in Jinja a good while. But we plan on going to like Fort Portal and um, going to like Arua and stuff like that here soon. And when you look at Ginger and Fort Portal, mm -hmm. then you can go, as I said, those are the mm -hmm. few spots when 
you ask someone about Ugandan tourism, mm. they need to be knowing things from those areas. Mm. And when they find them, when you when you learn about those, you know something about the Ugandan yeah. tourism industry. Yeah. Apart from that, like the services here, let me talk about the internet. Because mm. leaving the States, most of everything is on the internet. Yeah. How are you finding the internet connection right <laughs> here in Uganda? Um, <laughs> That's that. That's an interesting one. So yeah. the internet, it yeah. works. Yeah. Um, it's not what I'm used to. Yeah. Uh, where we stayed at in the states, it is. It was sponsored by Google. Google. So because of that, um, we had the fastest internet in the world. So wow. if you had a terabyte of movies, we would download in 10, 20 seconds max. <laughs> Yeah. In 10 seconds, you have it a terabyte of fast. That simply fast. means if I am uploading a YouTube video that is about 7 GB, yeah. it will go there in just microseconds. Seconds. And it. Seconds. Wow. Yeah. So, so being here in Uganda with, some, with a little bit slow internet, right. I think you just you're learning it's one of the things you're learning to, to right. live with right it's a it's a give and a take yeah. as good as it is in the states yeah. to have those sort of uh amenities yeah. is it worth it i think no yeah. i'd rather take my my 250 megabyte internet yeah. over the terabyte and you know one gigabyte every second internet so that's cool. And for the people out there, yeah. what is that message as we are trying as we are winding up? Mm. What is that message that you would give or you would send to the people out there that are still contemplating about coming into Uganda? Mm. Uh, there's a few things. One, it would be don't be judgmental. Um, just visit. And I would say uh, more than anything, take a look at the investments and the possibilities that are here. Because the possibilities, I, you before you take over any industry, you would die, and your kids would die. The main thing would be uh, come here open-minded yeah. and ready to work. However, with that, it's more of a, a change of a mindset. Yeah, yeah granted. We come with a mindset of work, work, work here, and you do that here a lot. Yeah. But it's it's different in a sense of add something to it, add some people to it, yeah. and it's bigger than just you. Um, other than that, it is come here and get invested into a culture. Don't just stick into your bubble and just be the American or the expat or whatever. Yeah. No, get around some people that's from here. Yeah. Learn how things are done. In here. In here, Not in Uganda. Coming with what is done from the exactly. other side and want to do it the way it is done exactly, exactly. from the other side. Learn with the, what people like and how it is done in here, mm -hmm. then you move in like that. Exactly. Okay. So, you chose business in Uganda, yeah. and the business you're choosing is meat processing, or yeah. processing, of course you're processing meat, adding value. Right. Why did you choose to add value, and please talk about that and also talk about the company. Okay. So, basically we started a company uh, called Ubor Safi, and it's just, it's simply just making sausage, hamburgers, and stuff in that realm. So from just chicken and uh, beef. But um, essentially, we wanted to add a different flavor to what's done here on a regular. Yeah. You know, it's just being creative. You know, if you eat the same type of hamburger or the same type of sausage all the time, yeah. it gets boring. Exactly. So we wanted to do something different. So we chose to go that route for now. But with the meat processing, for now it's just sausage, but at one point, you know, if we end up just being a meat slaughter company as well to have chickens and beef and maybe lamb, yeah. you know, we would love to go into that one day. 
And when when we're talking about processing, you've talked about the company Borasafi. Yeah. That simply means you're putting out something into the Ugandan market. Yeah. For the people around Kampala, mm. please tell them where they would find what you, what your products are doing. Because if you're bringing out a product into the the, the, the onto the market, yeah. you must be putting it out somewhere. You have outlets you're putting yeah. it to. Where can they find your products? So, as of right now, um, we're at a few places as far as hotels, you know, uh, like Marriott. But here in the future, we'll be at like Carry Four um, for our products. And it's just sausage and hamburgers for now, uh, chicken and beef. Meaning, in Carry Four at the moment, are you doing any, like, are there your are your products in Carrefour as you say or not yet? Not yet. We yeah. will be there in about a month and a half. Okay. That simply means for the people that are seeing this video, yeah. And today we are in May. If you're seeing it beyond that, please go check out Carrefour, the supermarket, and try to look for their goods and make sure to support them. Of course, we've had some bites and they're tasting okay. They're way different from what they sell to us here on the market. Yeah. It's more beef. I think most, <laughs> the biggest percentage of the sausage is beef. Yeah. Then a few spices. Yeah. It's it's about it's about ninety percent, ninety ninety five percent beef. And mostly. And ninety ninety five percent chicken. And mostly all the beefs that the sorry the sausages that we have on the market is almost fifty percent right. beef. Right. Then the other thing is additives. Exactly. Which isn't right. I think. Right. Right. That's the reason why we wanted to do something like that. It was just to give you the quality of what you do, what you deserve. Okay. You know, so that's what we wanted to do. Is just simply give something. If you pay for beef, I expect to get beef. Exactly. So, you know, just to keep it simple. Okay. Tell them the details, the contact details, yeah. or the website where they can get you on social media and try to see what you people do. Wow. It's from. There, where they would start supporting the business from. So we're at uh, uborasafi.com, U B O R A S A F I.com. That's where you can actually order yep. from us as well. Uh, we have WhatsApp on there. We're also on all the social media websites from Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and so on. Yep. So, Julius, yep. I want to welcome you to the Pearl of Africa. On behalf of the many Ugandans that haven't welcomed you, thank you for choosing Uganda. And to the people out there, please choose Uganda. And I wish you the best journey. And I do believe that you're going to thrive on this Ugandan market. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for allowing me to interview you and coming to the channel. I think more people will be supporting you and a lot more is yet to come. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you're you. welcome. Thank you.